Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What we're going to be doing today is uh, another tutorial. Uh, this is a, uh, a new series I'm starting um, using um, some references here from, uh, from the world of Pokemon. So we're going to start off this tutorial with one of the most basic uh, forms that you can mess with from the, uh, the, the Pokemon universe, the Pokeball. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling this um, and rendering it basically in order to demonstrate relatively simple modeling techniques um, and also get into rendering and materials and, and setting up your image in a relatively brief video. So uh, this is the final end result of what we're going to be doing. And we're going to go ahead and get started uh, from scratch here. So let me open up my blank document here. So file, create a new document, and we're using millimeters here. So make sure you're in the metric system. And um, if you have not watched previous videos, uh, this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, I have on this playlist a couple of introductory videos taking you from square one with Rhino 8 all the way to where we're at now and moving beyond. So uh, please reference those videos, the, uh, the, the basics videos, if you have not had any experience with the software because I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how modeling works in Rhino, command line functions, and the user interface. So going ahead and getting started here, um, I want to draw the basic spherical structure, and I'm gonna do it in a front view. So if I double click into the front view here, and I draw a sphere by typing the word sphere, enter, and I'm gonna start the sphere, it asks me for where the center is, I'm gonna hit zero, enter, I'm going to start to drag it on out and I'm going to do 113 image, inch, uh, millimeters as the diameter. So actually, let me make sure back up here, hit D for diameter. Let's do it again. Sorry. Sphere, zero, enter, drag it out, D for diameter, enter. And then we're going to do one, one, three, enter. Yeah, because by default, it should be set up to radius. And so if you don't have it um, looking the way mine does on this grid here, then you've got it in radius mode instead of diameter. So 113 inch, uh, millimeters in diameter here. And then what we want to do is we want to cut off a flat face um, of, of the uh, Pokeball here to be able to put the circular elements. So I'm going to do that by going to a top view and drawing a line from the back here. So I'm going to type line, enter. And using my object snaps, I'm going to find that endpoint here. And if for some reason you're not seeing that endpoint show up, it's probably because if we look in perspective and under our visual style shaded here, um, you might not have the seam in the right place. So you see how this line goes around this center here because we drew it in a front view the way I did that seam is there. If your seam is not there, go ahead and click on the sphere and rotate it using the rotation tools here. With ortho on, so it locks into a 90 degree angle, you can change that. So, whoops. So you grab these areas here to kind of rotate it around until you get this, this, uh, the center of it looking the way mine does. Because that's gonna be crucial for, for future stuff as well. So, okay. Next, we want to offset this forward here. So I'm going to go to a top view again in wireframe and go offset, enter. And then what offset does is it does kind of like what it so sounds like. It creates another line or another object matching the object you're offsetting to the other side. So I want to do an offset, enter, D for distance, 109, enter. So I'm going to offset this 109 millimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to use the gumball and drag that over. If your gumball is not turned on, then you don't have uh, access to this little X, Y, and Z deal. You want to make sure you have that. So once that's like that, we're going to go ahead and hit trim, enter, select the cutting object, which is this, enter, and then trim that out. If I switch into perspective here, you can see what it did. It cut off that little section there. If I undo control Z there, I can um, show you another thing that's kind of cool. This is um, in Rhino 8, a new tool uh, with the gumball. You have this flat line here. If I 
hold down shift so that it, it extrudes this line both sides. It will create a cutting surface that'll cut through the face of the Pokeball. There you go. Click delete and now we've got the same thing in less steps so that's a new tool but it's important to also know how trim works too so i'll show you both okay now we have uh kind of the basics next thing we want to do is add the um, circular elements so making sure that your object snaps are turned on i'm going to type circle and hopefully you're getting a center um a, a center snap that comes up here and that should be turned on right there if not you might actually have to draw a line use line tool type line enter and go from the uh well you can turn off the center if it's but <laughs> if that's not working um you can go from the end to the end right so if i draw from there to there but the center should work fine um, if it's not then you can just do uh, the circle this way draw a line across it and i'll oftentimes use a line to find my midpoints just kind of um, uh, triangulating that midpoint there and using that to kind of build my my um, my circle now we can see that my circle though is going the wrong direction and it's because the construction plane is set up this way so i'm going to go ahead and delete this line turn my center back on because it's going to uh, work for me. Um, if it doesn't work for you, that line will help. No problem. So I'm going to turn on my auto C plane here. And then um, what auto C plane does is, it can be kind of annoying, but it's also very awesome. <laughs> uh, making sure that you, if you're ever having problems with the grid going all over the place, you turn that off because that's kind of probably your issue, but it also sets the construction plane to anything selected. So if I have um, this surface selected, it will set the construction plane to that surface. So to select that surface, we use a sub object select tool where we hit control shift and click on it and it'll set the C plane to that. If you have a Mac, you're using the command shift click to set your, your construction plane. Great. Now we type circle and define the center of the circle, hover over it or use the midpoint on a line. So I'm going to click there when it says set, um, it says circle there and I'm going to hit D for diameter enter and the center circle is going to be 40 millimeters in diameter okay or the largest circle i should say great so now we have that one next we want to offset that in six millimeters to get the end of that so offset enter this and we're going to hit d enter six enter click okay And then we're going to go ahead and do another circle in the middle that has a, a diameter of 17 millimeters. So go circle, hover for the center, click, and then type 17, uh, D, enter, 17, enter. All right. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, making this thing uh, three dimensional. So the way we're going to do that is by uh, using a new tool in Rhino 8, which is amazing. Um, AutoCAD's had this tool for many, many years, and it, um, I believe it's called Press Pull uh, in AutoCAD, and it's called Push Pull in uh, Rhino 8. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Push Pull, Enter. And I'm going to select inside like the, the island of this because I want to push this section out, right? So I select that, hit enter, and I'm going to bring it out three millimeters, okay? And then I'm going to bring out the second one, this second sec section in here, I'm going to bring that out 1.5, oh, no, 2.5, sorry, 2.5 millimeters, okay? And then I'm gonna bring out the middle one, three as well. So just drag it outwards and hit three, enter. Oop, I hit 33, my bad, <laughs> hold on, undo. Press pull, drag it out, three millimeters. Okay, so let's look at it in shaded here uh, or in rendered, just so we can kind of see how it looks. Okay. I might actually think that that's too much of an offset. 
let me just do it at, uh, do it again, which I think will help those of you who were not following along. Let me uh, caliper my. Yeah, it's supposed to be 1.75 based off of my model that I'm referencing here. So again, let's go ahead and switch back to shaded here and go push, pull, enter, click on this one, enter, 1.75, enter, push, pull, this one, enter, oops, control Z, push on this one, 1.5 maybe, okay, and then push on this one, 1.75, enter. And that gives me uh, this exterior shape that's gonna be black, an interior that's gonna be white, and another interior that's gonna be white as well. All right, so, so far so good. Um, next step is to create the band that goes all the way around the object. But first I actually want to um, cut off the bottom here so it's flat on the bottom, just so, you know, if you ever wanted to 3D print this or make this anything else, so it won't roll away from you. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to a front view here and I'm gonna draw a little line, uh, just maybe right, eh, a little bit lower. I don't wanna cut off too much here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go trim, enter, cutting mat, uh, cutting object, enter, click, enter, and then I'm gonna go cap, enter. So that should cap off the bottom as well. Okay, so that gives it a nice uh, area for it to sit. Okay. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create that banding around the exterior of it. And that band is seven millimeters. So from a front view, I can draw a line from the midpoint across here. Okay. And then I can um, go ahead and offset that line, the D enter, and it is seven inches. So I'm just gonna do four or seven millimeters. So I'm gonna do four millimeters this way and four this way. Great. Awesome. So next perspective here, and I'm going to select this line and this line, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead actually and um, let's see, how should I do this? I'm actually gonna go ahead and first I'm gonna explode this. So the problem is, is if I if I cut this, it'll cut the, the front. I don't wanna cut the front too. I'm gonna leave the front the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and explode this, enter. And I'm gonna, so explode basically breaks it into all of the different surfaces are separate. So now I can select this and this and join them together, enter. So Joining will join any surfaces that are edge to edge. So now those two are together. Uh, fantastic. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to undo that. I'm going to actually delete this. Delete. And then I'm going to cap it. Cap. Oh, wait. Join these two. And then let me isolate this so you can see what I'm doing. So if I under my standard tab here, click and drag this down to isolate here. It gets rid of everything except for what's selected, which is really nice. Then I can cap this and there we go. I've got, you know, my object now is all one surface again. And then I can bring this back. I don't know what that, surf that sphere was, but I got rid of it. Okay. Cool, so now I've got this object and then I've got all of these face objects here. So let me left to right select. Those of you remember from the last video, if you right to left select, it grabs everything. If you left to right select, it only grabs the things that are in the box, which is all I want. And then left to right select, I wanna isolate this. Okay, I'm gonna turn my auto C plane off for now too. 
So the back of this is like that, which I don't want. I'm gonna now join all of these back together. So it's all one object and then cap it so that it has a capped back. And then I wanna get rid of all of the unnecessary um, lines here. So I can go up to edit, select objects and select curves. And I can just get rid of my curves that I don't need anymore. So that just gives me that. And then I can right click on, um, on our, our little light bulb here to bring everything back. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, hide this part. So just, you can even type hide. You know, select the object type, hide, and it hides it. Then what I want to do is I'm going to split the Pokeball with these two guidelines that I set up earlier at a eight millimeter spread from the middle of it. And so I'm going to grab my green arrow here, shift for both sides, and drag it out. So that gives me this surface on the inside here. This and this are also, if I isolate it, open so i don't want that open um or no it's they're not open that's right because it did it it caps it automatically oh awesome that's right new tools great stuff okay so now i brought everything back by just shifting or right clicking on this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually pull this in a little bit so that it offsets in and i'm going to kind of do it just holding down shift and using the green uh, you can use any of them actually. So if I hold down shift and pull this inward, it just sucks it in a little bit. So I just want to suck it in a little bit, just like that. Okay. So that gives me that little band across the middle. Great. Now I don't need any of these curves anymore. So I'll go back up to edit, select objects, curves, and hit delete. Awesome. So then what we want to do is, um, I kind of like want to, this is all very sharp. If I look at it in uh, rendered view. Right, it's very sharp. So I kind of want to make the metal look a little bit rounded in certain areas. And then also I want a little bit of a shadow behind this. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit just so it has like a little back shadow to it. Maybe that was even too much. Yeah, okay. So next what I wanna do is I wanna round out this. So I'm gonna hide this one so you can see what I'm doing. I wanna fillet the edge, which and remember that from the previous video, um, it basically just rounds the edges. So if I go fillet edge, enter. Um, select the edge you want to fillet. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one and this one. Let me put it back in shaded so it's easier to see for y'all. Okay. And by default, it's right now it's set at one millimeter. That might even be too much. Um, I might be able to do uh, a radius of 0.5. Ah, actually you have to, okay. So you have to enter flake edge and then change your radius to 0.5 enter and then select the edges you would like to fillet. Okay, yeah, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and bring this back. Okay, and maybe I'll even fillet this edge a little bit. So fillet edge, this one, 0.5 radius two. Sure, that looks good. And these ones in here are too small to do 0.5. So you would have to do a really minute radius, which honestly, I don't need to deal with right now. I'm fine with it. it looks like the way I want it to, great. And that'll do it for the first part of our three-part Pokeball series. Um, part two will be rendering and uh, playing with photorealism. Uh, and then, of course, the third part will get into uh, modeling and prepping for 3D printing this object.